Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we will be painting the Orlock Outrider quads. In particular, we'll be painting this one right here. But I paint these both at the same time to save money. So the goal here is to use pretty much all Army Painter paints, since those are so widely available, and uh, do a paint method that will get these tabletop ready in one day. All right, so let's talk about what we used to paint this guy. Now, you can see, get a good head-on look. All right, so I primed him standard Mechanicus Gray. Then I used Army Painter's Gunmetal, Matte Black, Wolf Gray, Necromancer Cloak, Ash Gray, Leather Brown, Mummy Robes, Dragon Red, Oak Brown, Barbarian Flush, Field Gray, Ash Gray, Fog Gray. Then I used Vallejo German Camouflage Beige, World War II. That's for the dust effect. And I used As Washes Citadel's Nuln Oil and Reichland Flesh Shade. So let's go ahead and get started on this guy. So I've primed the quad, standard Mechanicus Gray, all over. And the way we're going to go about painting this model is from the inside out. So, the paint I'm going to use is Army Painter Gunmetal. We're going to start on the inside. Um, here where the engine block is. Get a little paint out here. Alright. And just give a sense of where we're going to paint. I'm going to do... Uh, so it's do right there in the wheel. So we're going to reach in and hit the engine block. Oh, wait, that's exhaust right there. There's the engine block. I'm going to hit the supports. Another little button up here. It's got interesting little piercing blades. So, we're going to do those. Forward suspense, suspension system. Just controls. So you can see a lot of this figure, I'm actually going to use the standard Mechanicus Gray for the body, so I don't want to touch that too much. Let's get more of these struts. Let's get the handlebars. I'm going to do his writing goggles. Do their shoulder pads. So we just go around and start hunting for little metal bits. And remember, shoulder pads wrap around behind them, both models. See, that's connective tissue. Now we're going to do the whole rear suspension and all the little uh, seat for the gunner. And then we've got some oddball metal pieces to pick out here. There's also, they've got these knuckle guards, back of their hands, and their gloves. Get some of the pistol here. So most of the bits around the pistol be silver, while 
body of the pistol will be black, and we'll get that later. Do the same thing with the heavy bolter. This kind of bolter is a heavy bolter. Let's see, we got some little latches up here. And there's a side pack. And got these little supports that hold the packs into place. So I'm just giving examples of the things I'm going to paint. Now you can go around. You might find some other bits that you want. The thing is, I'm leaving this. And this, and the standard mechanic is gray. Just to create a little breakup. Don't want it all gunmetal. What else we got? Ah, remember, I paint their little skull belt buckles. Get this armature. So I'm just kind of showing you what I'm going to pick out here. Now I got to go back through, fill it in. I'll go ahead and do these grenades. Now this carrier I'm going to leave for the standard mechanicus. Just carefully work around it. Let's get some exhaust pipe. Alright, got a lot of filling in to do. You gotta be careful. Don't want to touch the other parts. We don't want that color. Now I've painted all the gunmetal bits that we're gonna do. So you can see they're scattered about there. So now I'm going to take my Army Painter Matte Black. And the areas I want to do, obviously the tires. I'm going to cut that in there. Got the front and the rear tires on both sides. I'm also going to do their boots black. Now you'll notice I didn't. Now, this shin plate knee pad right there, I'm not going to paint it this time. I'm going to make that pop out later. Alright, now I mentioned before with the uh, housing on the weapon systems to be black. So we'll go ahead and do that. Alright, and next I want to do, I want to do the bands for their goggles. I gave the gunner up top a respirator. Paint all that black. And I'll move to the other side. So not too much black. So 
I'm just go ahead and start filling in all this detail. You don't need to see all that. Now we've done the black and the gun metal. I want to paint their pants. So I'm going to use wolf gray. And this is pretty self explanatory. Might need two coats to cover the uh, standard Mechanicus gray. Give them that jean look. Next we're going to use some Army Painter Necromancer Cloak. That's going to be the color of their jackets or cuts. And of their gloves. So we're actually getting pretty close here. The tricky part is trying to get the inside of the jacket. And this collar without touching anything else. Now I'm going to use some ash gray. And that's going to be for the shin guard here. And then I'm going to use it for his mighty road beard. Now we're going to do some Army Painter Leather Brown. Don't need much of this. Notice he's got a little strap around his chest here. Oops. Uh, get a little bit of brown on there. Okay. So we're going to do this little belt. do this whole package and you can see there's a little strap running down here don't want to hit the metal bits we've already done and then we see over on this side we're going to leave the case Mechanic is gray, but I still want to get this strap to be brown. Just give it a different color from how the rest of the model is developing. Now we're going to paint their shirts with some Army Painter Mummy Robes. And you notice on the top writer there's some other type of shirt 
that's coming out underneath his pr sh primary shirt like he's wearing long underwear which can happen in the ash waste. I guess it gets cold when the storms are in. So for that other shirt, I want it to be blue in the family, so we're going to use some fog gray. This will be a lighter blue than the wolf gray that we used. Now models coming together here on the paint job quickly as we intended it. I'm going to take some Army Painter Dragon Red. I'm going to take my small layer brush. All right. Now I'm going to take a big glob of paint right here and just follow the line down the center that glued it together. And I'll turn around and I'll go up. Because normally I can get the left side of the line straight. So that's why I turn it both ways. That way I can get it straight on both left sides. And this is just a practice thing. I'm going to paint straight lines. You know, it's best just uh, use the width of the brush to get that line. And then just pull back in one fluid motion. And once you have it marked out, then you can just fill in the paint to kind of darken it down. You know, it's easier when you do it something on edges like this. So because then you could use this fold in the plastic and then just take a bead of paint and get it nice and straight just glide tip of the brush on the edge of the plastic The same there. Try to match the width. Go. Now we're going to let that dry for a bit. Now that our model has dried here, we're ready to put on some liquid talent, or known oil as I call it. What I'm going to do is use a brush that I've already messed up, wet it a little bit. And we're just going to slop this stuff on. And then once we are done, we are going to wait a while before we can touch it again. And you can see what it's doing to the Mechanicus Gray Primer, which is the color I wanted for the quad bikes there. Alright, almost done.
All right, so as you can see, this has dried, and it's looking pretty good. Now we're going to do the skin tone of the driver, and I'm going to use Army Painter Oak Brown. I'm going to use my really tiny brush. So you want to get this nose there. See, at this point, we really don't want to start touching other colors. I'm going to work across the back of this band, get his neck and everything. And to his arm. And remember, the gloves don't have fingertips or cut off. So, work patiently through this part. Now we're ready to do the backseat officer, the whippo, the, I'm sorry, the whistle. <laughs> so he's operating the weapon system, and we'll just pick some, where did I put it? Barbarian flesh. We don't actually have that much on him, so once again I'll use my thin brush just to catch above his goggles up to his hairline. Still got the glove cutouts there. On this one, I don't want to worry too much about showing them. Actually, I'm going to leave the gloves alone. I can't see his hands. It's tough to get the brush back in there, so I'll probably cause more damage than anything I'd help. Now we're ready to put on our Netch uh, wash. So we're going to use Reichland Flesh Aid. And this one I want to be a little bit more targeted than I was with the Null Oil. So I'll just take the brush, dip it there. And since we're doing a little bit very thin, it won't take long for this to uh, dry. And that's why I work on these as squads all at once. Forgot to do his hair. So I'm going to take some Army Painter Field Gray. And this allows us to clean up the skin. And the hairline. Use my bracelet with my pinky. I'm supposed to do this before the wash, but I forgot. So we'll go ahead and paint this and wash it in the Reichland Flesh Aid, then we'll be back. Right, so it's all dried up, we're ready to go, and we're going to go back to Ash Gray. Now we're going to take a dry brush and load it up with paint and off camera I'm wiping off most of the paint of a piece of paper towel and uh, hit the brushes until it looks like no more paint's going off and then we'll go around hit the tires just all the black and gray spots Just put a little bit of color. On those. 
A little bit goes a long way, but probably as much as you want. So you can see that model's really coming along. I just got this all figured out here. Now we're going to make it look dusty. And for that, what I've been using in all my ash waste is German camouflage beige, World War II. You could probably use something like a skeleton bone from the Army Pan line if you have to. But you have to imagine the way we're going to do this, we're going to use your dry brush. And I haven't cleaned it out from the ash gray to save time. And it really doesn't affect it. So we're going to imagine as this guy's driving through the ash waste. So these front tires and rear tires are going to kick up a plume. So we're going to want most of the dry brush strokes to move up in a triangle like that. Um, just to show that this tile are spinning, spinning, shooting up the dirt. So we're going to be careful. And since we're almost done, light touches are best. So now the whole tire will be covered. Now when we do this, we normally when you do a dry brush, you want it all just to stick to the edges here, but you know it's dust. And I live in New Mexico now. And it gets everywhere. And this all depends on how thick you want to put this stuff down on it. That's why I normally highlight the metal, make it pop out a little bit more. But I didn't bother doing that because I knew I'm just going to cover it up with this sand color. If you ever wonder, that's why the backseat guy has a mask. Get a mask, and he's smoke. He's sucking in exhaust and sand. <laughs> now the trick here is try to make the coverage of sand even, or in a way that's logical to the motion of the vehicle. Don't be afraid to turn it upside down so you can reach some of these places. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually just cover the whole um, wheels in the sand color, because that would actually make sense. The trick is getting the flat surfaces just as equal as the edges. See, that looks almost done. I'm going to go back and use some fog gray here. Very carefully, we're going to do the lenses with our goggles. I use my extra tiny brush for this. I'm 
thin down the paint a little bit just so it flows through all the recesses around the edge of the goggle without me having to paint the goggle itself uh, there we go and then where did I put it? Ah, can go back to the mummy robes barely a hint of a drop and we're going to go wipe most of it off I'll put just a little sun reflection there Looped down a little more than I wanted, but it actually looks pretty good. Just put a little dot. There we go. Alright, well that looks good. Didn't take too long to put together, so I did both bikes in about a day. That's the goal we set for ourselves. All right, well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.